one more question on biblical theology, especially as it relates to your topic in that, um, in that book, Ray. Uh, that book, God's Unfaithful Wife, which Sam reminded me that the first title was just called Hordem. Um, blunt, subtle, indeed. Um, tell me... <laughs> it's late. It's nothing but trouble this time of day. Um, here's the question. So many Old Testament descriptions of whoredom uh, seem very graphic. They seem racy. They um, are sometimes crude. And someone wrote in, it, it seems like a lively discussion these days, especially among pastors, as to just how graphic, lewd, etc., God's Word gets in its descriptions in certain places. Can you comment on the pathway, especially for young pastors today, between capturing the power of the Word images and guarding against unnecessary crudeness? There are passages uh, in the Old Testament that are, that are in intentionally crude because the sin that they're describing is crude but it doesn't feel crude to us we need to be shocked uh, the very word whoredom um, we, might, we might think that, doesn't, that just doesn't fit in the Bible but it is in the Bible in lurid detail that actually, as a pastor, would be embarrassing. It's embarrassing. There are passages I would be embarrassed to tell you what they actually say. But apparently the Lord, because he loves us, wants us to see the reality of sin in our lives with a kind of vividness that we would not have comprehended without his alert in the Bible. Now the practical question, how does one actually do that in, how does a man do that in preaching? Um, I mean, principially, we all need to know the whole book in detail. We should all love the Bible so much we just want to get all of it we can. And it's a wonderful blessing to a pastor when there's a deep impulse in the heart of the congregation, pastor, I want to know what it really says. Don't hold back. Tell me what God has said. And that's empowering to a pastor. It's thrilling when that sense captures a whole church. Now, uh, whether a pastor in going through a book, for example, he's not cherry-picking passages. If he's going through a book or handling a theme, he may want the children not to be in church on a certain Sunday. So he may want to warn parents and so forth. And of course, a pastor would never want to handle a, 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 a delicate passage in, in a sensational way. Uh, uh, perhaps I could say there should be an inverse relation between the luridness of the passage and the uh, delicacy of the discourse so that there's no risk of appearing to take advantage of the Bible just to make a splash. Uh, but uh, if God didn't want us to be aware of these things and think about these things and struggle with these things, he wouldn't have put them here in his word. Let's go for it. If you want a good example, a graphic example of what he's talking about, when you go home tonight, don't do it now. We'll <laughs> lose you if you do it. Just go read Ezekiel 16. As my, one of my friends says, it'll rip your face off. <laughs> uh, it's really amazing that God would say those things about his people. Um, you know, just, I know there's a debate raging now, we won't name names, about stuff, but what is appropriate and inappropriate speech. Some pastors, I think, uh, fear, I, it, fear, it grieves me to say this, but some pastors, I think, just want to be provocative and nasty, and they'll appeal to the Bible to justify it. And I think that's very dangerous. Uh, hopefully they're few and far between. Others, as you said, have, have simply realized, this is the Laodicean church that, that I'm a part of, and, and I need to say some really harsh things about them. Uh, and, and I'll use biblical categories to do so. Um, 
I think the, the really the bottom line here comes down to a couple of factors. I think how we talk, and I'm thinking specifically about preachers and teachers, is dictated by a couple of things. It's, it's oftentimes dictated by your own personality, by your upbringing, uh, but it's also dictated largely by the context in which you're ministering. Um, I, I'm, I'm pastoring in, in the, the buckle, we call the buckle of the Bible Belt, right now, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Um, and that kind of language will not fly there. Uh, even, if, if, even if you could point and say, well, here it is, it's biblical language, it just won't go. Um, you find yourself in some larger city context that are extremely unchurched and, and alien in ways that uh, it's hard to even describe. And sometimes it becomes necessary. Um, I, I personally, um, in spite of what I said a moment ago, to, see, to me that was offensive, what I said a moment ago. I, I just like verbal modesty as much as is possible. Now, sometimes um, maybe a little bit of verbal frankness and immodesty is called for, but I would be very, very, I personally am very careful about that. I have a hard time doing that. I hear certain language used in the pulpit and it really gets to me. But for others, it doesn't. Uh, you know, that's a hard one. 